Did you know there's a temple in Malta that's made completely out of rocks, nothing holding it together? Yeah, the stones are so big that Alyssa can't even pick them up. What? <laughs> <laughs> With you for another week of Around the World with Joshua and Alyssa. And of course, we have one more week of Malta. Mm -hmm. Two more weeks, today and next week. So here we go. Today, we are going to look at one of the oldest freestanding stone structures in the world. I mentioned this a few weeks ago, also known as megalith structures, and megalith just means big stone. <laughs> That UFO? That's what that looks like. No, it has nothing to do with UFOs. So, from a distance, this is uh, what you would see if you're going to look at this one structure because it has a big protective cover over it because these structures are made out of limestone. And the limestone, as the rain wears on it, it just disintegrates over time. So, uh, they are trying to protect it. And you get a little closer, and oh. now you can see under it. Now, this structure is about five to 6,000 years old, from what they can estimate. And there was a farmer who was like trying to do some crops or something, trying to clear a field. And in his land, he had these like these large stones in the ground and he was going to remove them but he couldn't and if you look at this picture on the left side there's some stones on the wall that are like really tall those were the ones that were sticking out of the ground everything <laughs> else was completely covered so he's starting to try to remove these stones and they are way too big for him to do that starts digging down and finds that there's more than just stones here. Well, there are just stones there, <laughs> but it was more than just some rocks in a field. And so these people came and excavated it, and there are like six, seven or more of these locations around the island, but this is one of the more famous or one of the older ones. So now we get closer, and the reason we call these freestanding structures is because they are not nailed together. They are not held together with concrete or anything. Mm. They were just placed there and stacked in such a way that nothing would fall apart. That's impressive. Yeah. Now this is one of the sides where it looks a little more like messy. <laughs> that there is an entrance to the building, one of the doorways. This is a doorway that was cut right into the rock. Whoa. Yeah. So nice and straight. We got to walk through this. We weren't supposed to touch anything, but we could actually walk through the whole thing. This is the front of the building. And if you can imagine rest of the building looking this nice, and then it did have a fully covered roof, all made out of these giant stones that were just stacked on top of each other in such a way that it would not cave in. Here's a, a wall inside a circular or a semicircle. And if you look, you can still see part of the ceiling or the roof is still there. And so they would just stack these rocks on top of each other closer and closer in with other ones on the top of them to hold them down so that they're not falling in is quite a structure back when they hmm. first built this. So do they think it was like dome shaped then? Um, yes. On the inside, it would have looked more dome-shaped. On the outside, um, kind of, but not not the same way. It would have still been more of a flat top um, with stones covering it. Like, it's really, it's kind of, here, let me try this. So, you have your wall, and mm -hmm. then you have a stone on top, mm -hmm. and then you have another stone on top. Well, this one will fall in, right? Mm -hmm. So they stack a stone here and then a stone on top of that that will hold this uh, one okay. from falling. And so then you can put 
round inside, but yes. outside kind of more boxy. Then you shape. can put something there to hold it, and one here to hold it, and just keep doing that all the way until you have your whole ceiling. Got it. But remember, these are like really, really, really heavy rocks. So we don't know exactly how they did this. Impressive. They had some kind of technology, obviously. Um, now, they're, they do say that at this time they had no metal tools. They had no whatever, no whatever. Um, I think a little differently. I think that even from the beginning of time, the Bible says that they had tools of metal and other things. So I'm pretty sure they weren't just going out and using their fingernails or other rocks and digging these and shaping them that way. I think they were a little smarter. They had a lot more tools than we think they had, but probably because they didn't find any while excavating that that's the conclusion mm -hmm. they came to. But somehow they moved these huge stones around and built this impressive structure. There's another side. Look at the one on the left. It's See huge. That? that is the largest rock in the structure. There's a picture of it right there. They estimate that it's about 20 tons. Three meters are about 10 feet tall, 6.4 meters, so about 20 feet long, and 20 tons are 40,000 pounds. And somehow they just moved it into place. Now they did find like some, some rounder rocks that look like they might have been rollers that they might have rolled these on in order to get them to the spot. Um, but still really impressive. Wow. So, one last picture. These are those really tall ones that were sticking out. And see how they're more worn at t on the top? That's because they were exposed to the elements while everything else was buried. Mm. So now they have this whole structure over the top to keep it safe. Sometime I should see if I can find pictures, because I have pictures from the oldest mud city in the world in Peru. Ooh. But they have covered it too to kind of protect it, obviously, because it's mud. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of it is still intact, and it's pretty cool to see how creative people were with what few tools they had. Mm -hmm. God gave a lot of creativity, and people were so smart even back in the day. <laughs> They're probably stronger than us too. Just, I guess. <laughs> Both. <laughs> probably. Well, you want to hear some more story? Yeah. Okay. Go have some snack. Okay, we left off our story with Ringu getting ready to go on a tiger hunt. And this is super exciting and scary for him at the same time. But after he talked to Grub Said, he realized that he didn't have to be scared anymore and he could always call on someone, right? He knew that he could call and he could have the help from the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. So we're gonna go with our story today and hear how their tiger hunt goes. So Ringo was on the platform with his dad and a few of the other men from the village and they sat there and there was the ox, in the, the ox that they had killed kind of like as bait to see when the tiger would come over and they were ready and watching. And Ringo was nervous, but he always remembered, I could always call on the name of the Lord and God will hear me and God will listen and that helped calm him down, helped him not be quite so scared the tiger was going to be a scary animal. Well, they waited and they watched and finally they saw something kind of coming out of the edge of the jungle and it was that tiger. And it was a beautiful thing to watch and terrifying at the same time. But Ringo remembered, you can call on the name of the Lord who created heaven and earth and God will still care about whatever's going on. And he watched the tiger and all the men watched. They were waiting for just the right moment to make sure that they got the tiger and didn't kill somebody else. Ringo pointed it out and everyone watched very quietly. They looked at it and someone aimed and they shot at the tiger but they didn't quite get it all the way and the tiger now knew where they were. So he spun around and he was looking up in the tree where they were and Ringo didn't know what to do next. So he grabbed his flashlight and he started shining it in the tiger's face and then he threw it. And the tiger went after the flashlight and that gave the men enough time to reload, to aim again, and the tiger this time turned around and jumped straight up toward the platform where Ringo and the men were standing and watching. As the tiger jumped straight up, mouth open, eyes glaring, somebody shot once, twice, and the tiger crumpled to the ground. They had gotten the tiger. Whew! That was huge relief, and Ringo was so excited. All the people, all the men were thrilled. They had gotten the tiger, they had saved their village, 
Now they were safe. And the spirits hadn't hurt Ringu, even though he didn't have his charm on. And God had heard him. Jesus had heard him call on his name and it helped him not be scared. So Ringu's job was next to run to the village and get a cart so they could load up the tiger and bring it through the village for the people to see. They had caught the tiger and it was exciting news. So just as the sun was coming up, Ringu got to run into the village and tell everyone, everyone, we're safe. Don't worry. We got the tiger. We'll be safe. I just need a cart and we'll bring it out and everybody will be able to see that we got the tiger. And guess what? I didn't have my charm and God protected and looked out for me and I was watching for that tiger and God helped me. Everybody thought he was a little bit crazy. Even his brother thought that there was no reason why Ringu should have been out there. He's going to make the spirits angry. Ringu was disappointed because now people didn't really want to talk to him. They were just worried about the tiger and they thought he was a little bit crazy for listening to the missionaries and what they had to say about God. Well, as he was walking back, he heard a sound, and it sounded like an engine getting revving, going around and around and around. And he thought, no, the missionary, this was the day the missionary is going to leave. Not another friend going away. So he stopped by, and he told the missionary right away, guess what, Grub Said? We got the tiger, and, and I called on the name of Jesus, and I felt calm, and I was not scared. And the missionary nodded, that's great, Ringo, I'm so glad, but we have some problems. Our car got stuck in a big pothole of mud. And so the missionary kept getting in the car and revving the engine, but instead of getting out of the hole, it was just spewing mud everywhere, and they were getting stuck deeper and deeper into the hole. The missionary asked Ringo, do you have, is there someone who can help us? Are your oxen nearby? Oh no, they're probably out in the field, said Ringo, but it was a lie. He knew where they were. He knew they were at home in their stall because it had been night. That's where they were keeping them away from the tigers getting to them. But he was used to telling lies, so this was no big deal. But as soon as he said it, he kind of got a funny sick feeling in his stomach. This is weird. Well, missionary went and talked to the other man with him, and they thought, what are we going to do? We're going to have to maybe get some boards so we can stick it under there. And he said, well... Ringo, do you think that maybe your father could help us or somebody else? And Ringo said, I'll go get the oxen. And he started walking off right away. But he walked slowly to try to make Grub say he'd think that his oxen had been out in the field and he was going to have to get them, when really he knew right where they were, right home in their stalls. So he walked very slowly with them. And eventually he got them and brought them back. And he hooked them up to the front of the missionary's car and then he called to them and yelled at them to move forward and they pulled and they pulled and they were able to get Grub Said car out of the muddy spot and out of the big pothole and Ringo said there you go now you can go on your way but the missionary came over and he put his hand on Ringo's shoulder he said you knew those oxen were at home didn't you and that sick feeling came back to Ringo's stomach yes I did. Grub Said said, you know, God calls it a sin when we lie and we steal and we do things that don't please him. And you know, as someone who trusts Jesus as your savior, the Holy Spirit will, will let you know when you do something wrong. Do you know you've done wrong? And Ringu nodded. Yeah, he had. The missionary said, you know what? The Bible says that if we confess our sins if we tell God what we've done wrong he is faithful and he is just and he will forgive what we've done wrong so you can talk to God Ringu you can tell him you're sorry for lying and that you were wrong for making that choice and that you want him to help you do better in the future so Ringu took time to pray and tell God he was wrong for lying about where the oxen were and then he apologized to the missionary as well the missionary said well Ringu Thank you so much for bringing them. Anyways, thank you for bringing the oxen to help out and thank you for helping get us out of the rut. So how about before we go, we'll play a little music from the music box. And he went to the back of the truck and right away, Ringu had that awful sinking feeling. Where was that music box? Was it gonna be in the back of the truck? Do you remember where it is? Let's see if we flip back and uh, look at a picture to remind you. Remember the night that they had packed up the truck? He and his brother took the music box right and they hid it out in the field 
Well, the missionary went to the back of the truck and he began to move things around and he realized that the music box wasn't there. Uh, Pandu, where, where's the box? Did it fall out as we were driving on the bumpy road? They talked back and forth for a little bit and he said, we don't have time to go back and look over the whole road, Ringo. So if you can walk back the track back and if you find the music box, bring it to Miss Mary at the mission house and she'll make sure we get it back. I'm sorry, I don't know where it, what happened to it or where it is, but we've got to get on the way and we can't go back to look for it. So Ringo, go ahead and bring it to Miss Mary when you find it. Ringo shook his head and the missionary said goodbye and he and Pandu drove off, but Ringo knew right where that music box was the whole time. And he went to bed that night and he just kept thinking about what he had done wrong. He had taken that, but lying and stealing had just been something he had done all the time, but now it, there was, he felt bad about what he had done. Maybe the missionary was right. Maybe God was really telling him when things were wrong. So he thought about it and before he couldn't fall asleep, but before he fell asleep, he prayed. He said, Jesus, please forgive me for taking that music box and please help me to know what to do next. I don't know what to do with the music box next. I can't, I don't think I can keep it, but how do I fix what I've done? You're gonna have to come back next time to find out how he's gonna fix it and what's gonna happen next. Okay, well, we are going to get another update from the Philippines mm. and the church that is building a training center. That's the right. The Arrows Church. So, here we go. Trinity Bible Center in the Philippines. So, here are a few pictures. There are some concrete block that they had delivered and... There wow. is a concrete block in the wall. That's a lot of wall. It is a lot of wall, but look at this next picture. Whew. All four walls have gone up. That's in so what? fast. It's been about a month and a half, maybe. Yeah. I'm not sure, but they have been working hard. And just looking at this, it's really making me want to see the final product. <laughs> like, what will it look like when it's all finished and when you compare it to this picture? Mm -hmm. Or when you compare it to the earlier picture where they were just unloading supplies on this empty piece of ground. Well, and they had, like, trees and stuff. I think they had to clear off part of it, too, before they started building it. They have been making good progress on it. And a week and a half ago during it looks like i don't know a lunch break or something uh pastor or brother tiadero was speaking to them and three of them got saved these carpenters oh cool so here they are praying and three of them are now brothers in christ so there are not that many pictures but the pictures we do have show that they have made a lot of progress and this is the most exciting picture of all of them mm -hmm. because not only are they building a place to teach the Bible but more importantly along the way people are getting saved. That's really cool. Yeah. So, so exciting for we them. will keep giving you updates on them as they go along and uh, remember this is not the church building for their church they already have a building a very nice building but this is a bible center that they're building in a part where they reach out to people for them every saturday to be able to meet here in their own space that's pretty cool yeah so good for them as they continue to expand their ministries and their reach for christ yeah and they're even taking time to talk to the people who are working they're mm -hmm. not just there to build the building and talk to the other people. Yeah. They're looking for ways to talk to whoever's nearby. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Thanks again for coming and watching us. Yep. And I'm sure you found the hidden, unhidden new object <laughs> in our background here. And we'll <laughs> look forward to seeing you next week for week 30 of Around the World with Joshua and Alyssa. Yep. Yep. See you later. Bye.